10 to the 44. <laughs> OK, so uh, this doesn't work. A it can be rescued a little bit by the upwinded method. So let me just uh, uh, do it, uh, and uh, let's see what is going to happen. <coughs> right, let's have du dx. Uh, let's just uh, comment out this du dx. That's the central du dx. Let's say uh, left bias the du dx is u minus ul divided by just a delta x. And uh, let's uh, have a right bias uh, by ur minus u divided by delta x. And uh, let's combine them by saying du dx e is equal to what? u greater than 0 uh, times du dx. OK, so if u is greater than 0, which direction is the upwind direction? The left, yes. OK, plus u less than 0 times if u is negative, the right is the upwind direction. OK, so that's actually our conditional upwind scheme. Uh, you may ask, uh, what if u is equal to 0? Well, in that case, it's multiplied by u anyway. So uh, it's multiplied by 0 anyway. So let's uh, we can safely ignore this case. Uh, da, 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 da. Now it bumps into each other. OK, so we can see like this uh, shockwave stays put, right? OK, so this is actually a, a good solution except for it kind of only works uh, well in this special case when the shockwave is not moving. And uh, if you have the shockwave moving, for example, um, let me actually add, uh, add a half onto this initial condition. So you're going to see the solution is going to move towards the right as the shockwave is moving. You're going to see at some point. Uh, yeah, let, let's actually run it for a little bit longer. Uh, Okay. So the shockwave is there. It's it's it doesn't get destroyed, but uh, this is not the right behavior because the shockwave actually stays there. It doesn't move. Okay. In reality, when you have a when you have a solution, when you have a shockwave where the two sides of the shockwave so wants to move at different directions, and uh, this this side obviously wants to move a. This side wants to move to, to the right a lot more than this side wants to move towards the left, right? The shockwave itself should actually move towards the right. And uh, it doesn't really, uh, the finite difference method here actually doesn't really capture that. So although it's not going to blow up uh, dramatically, but the solution you get is incorrect, OK? So now, uh, what I have just said actually begs a question. How do you know if a solution is correct or not? Right? How do you know what, uh, what should actually be the solution to this differential equation? du dt plus u du dx equal to 0, 0, when you have a solution like that? Like what I'm saying, but what what do I mean when I say the shockwave should move towards the right? I mean, can you look at this equation and tell me if what I said is correct or not? No, there is no way, right? I can be bullshitting. <laughs> the, when when there is a when there is a shockwave, there is no du dx anymore. Agreed? Du dx is infinity. Like the solution actually the equation actually doesn't mean anything anymore at the shockwave. So what I, whatever I'm telling you about how the shockwave should behave cannot actually be uh, derived from looking at that equation. In other words, this equation, the derivation of this equation actually breaks down, right? So whatever physical phenomenon I'm trying to describe here, right? 
I have actually derived the equation from the actual physical phenomenon. And during the process of the derivation, I must have assumed that the solution U would have it describes the height of a wave, the pressure near an airplane or something. I have assumed that quantity being differentiable as a function of x. Right? Otherwise, I couldn't derive this equation. And that assumption, when a solution looks like that, is broken. Okay, so whatever I use to derive this equation it shouldn't be processed the same way as before. So how can we think of this in another in a different sense? 